injured here. 2v2 Caldera Safinery Blue Team. We have two Warlocks. First up, Caldoot. And Codex. These are offensive melee commanders. Good mobility with fleet. Can also leap into melee combat passively. Tank and disrupt very well. Up against them on the red team, we have two Force Commanders. First up, Lord Commissar David. And alongside, we have Kikin as a Blood Ravens Force Commander. These are also offensive and fight melee. Versatile can tank, disrupt and support. Don't quite have the mobility of the Warlock, at least early on. Arguably have the better offense though. Howling Banshees on the field for both Eldar players. Generally a good choice versus Space Marines coming in with their five power melee weapons. Tactical Marines for both Space Marine players. No huge surprises. Kicking going for some more scouts. And pressure on the west side straight away from Caldoot. Force Commander can get in amongst Banshees early on and disrupt them with his battle cry. Getting some chainsaw hits, but no battle cry. And Calduke retreats them. A very premature retreat. Hadn't lost any models. Very odd. Could have put pressure on, forced the retreat, and then hit power, but no, he's left to retreat his warlock. Dire Avenger didn't even get involved. Bit of a pointless push there from Calduke. What was he expecting if not scouts and tactical marines? 500 498 it's a one to one cap anyway here come codex's howling banshees these ladies have lost the model and they do retreat again no sign of any shotguns rangers on the way for both players double rangers can be very powerful against space marines allows you to put a lot of pressure on tactical marines from long range try and get some models off them Star Avengers in cover having a shooting match with Tactical Marines which doesn't usually end well for the opponents of Tactical Marines in Tier 1 anyway. Force Commander just hanging out at the back. 484-498 is a double cap for the red team. Gonna be a triple cap. We have some scouts capping mid. Devastators on the way for Lord Commissar David. Codex going for some shuriken, so this is a 1-1-1 one, one, one build. Banshees, Rangers, and Shuriken Cannon. Here are the Rangers. Great burst damage from long range. Kaldut still with the single Ranger squad. Might see double from him. 439, 498, still that triple for red. Hiding Banshees forcing off the force commander. Very nearly taking him down. 14 hit points, 13. 11 with their Shuriken pistols. 8. I don't think they'll get him. Here are the base turrets. He shouldn't have chased that long. In fact, it's a devastator set up in their face. We also have shotgun scouts for David. Kicking, not going for any shotgun so far. 409, 498. No war gear for any commander yet. We do have a sergeant up for kicking though. Gives them a fragmentation grenade, also allows them to detect infiltrated units and items. Dire Avengers under Devastator Fire, but they do cap. And it's a 2 to 1 for blue. Can they make it a triple? No, but they do make it a double. Rangers and Shuriken unloading on his tactical marines. Do not lose the model though, do get away. If the Howling Banshees were loitering around here with a hollow field, that could have been very, very nasty. Also have Pathfinder gear up for. Caldu and he does go for a Guardian Weapon Team also. Not sure why he delayed that decision. Aspect is up for Codex's Banshees. Pretty much a vital upgrade for them in Tier 1. I always think it's a shame that you never ever see the Banshee Exarch with her dual wielding power swords, which would be awesome to see because she always has, but has the Aspect when she comes on the field, gives her a spear. 409457 2 to 1 cap for blue. Caldoot's Banshee's waiting for support. Looks like Codex is going to double this side. Has the Merciless Switchblade. Also a very good choice versus Marines. No weapon for Caldoot's Warlock. Has his Rangers putting constant pressure. We able to easily outrange these Devastators as well. Set up team that suppress with a heavy bolter. 
can get a last cannon in tier 2. Take a shot from the Rangers. But here's a Shuriken. And David doesn't really have a counter to this thing. And he's gone for some more tactical marines, so he really doesn't have a counter for this thing. Shotguns for his scout, so he's unlikely to purchase a sniper rifle for them. Assault marines are on the field though for kicking. Here come Howling Banshees, the bane of assault marines in tier 1. Using their washout there to suppress them. Also have the merciless witchblade of course, which will drain the assault marines energy. Preventing them from jumping. And one of the huge advantages that assault marines have over other jump troops is that they can use their jump twice in a row almost. They only cost 55 energy so they only need to regenerate a small amount to jump again unlike raptors who need to spend 65 to jump again. Huge lag spike there. 409-445. There's a plasma grenade. Fire Avengers with their aspects. Assault Marines will jump the Shuriken, I think. Kikune is doing well to keep them in play, but taking a lot of damage. Are we going to see the Storm Shield for David to counter the Shuriken? No sign of it yet. And Kaldutz biding his time so far. Where is Rangers? They were forced off. And there is Warp Throw on the Devastators. Ouch. Warp throwed into Banshees and that was very very nasty. 407-445. Execution of Spear up for the Howling Banshees because they have their aspects. And Assault Marines on the field for Lord Commissar David. A very heavy 2-1. 1-1-1 one. One, one, one build for Space Marines is very power heavy. Tacticals, Devastators and Assault Squad. That's 80 power just for the... Assault Marines and Devastators, not including upgrades and Commander War Gear 382445. Nothing wrong with spending a lot of power in Tier 1 of though, of course. Make it count. Kaldut has lost his Howling Banshees. And here's a grenade. Might hit his own Assault Marines, I think he could do a little bit of damage there. And a full retreat from Kaldut. Was quite slow to recognise the threat there. But does get away. 372445. Wraith Lord on the way for Kaldut. Seen a lot of these guys recently. Which is always good. I love the walkers. Horse Commander gets a kinetic shot to the face from the Rangers. Such a great ability. They have so many uses. You can even use it to get Howling Banshees into melee unscathed. Codex now getting the X up for his Howling Banshees. Assault Marines jump in a Shuriken but take a lot of damage and instantly retreat. Shuriken can set up again. Howling Banshees with the Washout suppressing the Force Commander. And he's going to go down here. There he goes. Howling Banshees now in retreat. Assault Marines will jump the Shuriken again surely. There we go. Rangers are there. Very nice grenade. And he walks his tactical Marines right into the loser model and they are suppressed again. Really nice combined arms usage by the Eldar. Rangers, Shurikens, Howling Banshees causing a lot of problems for the Marines but they have forced them off here and they can get a 2 to 1, 3, 7, 2, 4, 1, 6 Red team going tier 2 when a Wraith Lord is already on the field I don't think they've seen it yet though Looks like he's going to move in here Always a good idea to keep your dangerous game changing units such as Walkers hidden as long as you can don't want them to catch a glimpse so they can get a counter ready when you push. No sign of thunder and lightning for assault squads. No sign of their sergeants either. I expect we will see maybe double power fist some missile launcher tactical marines when they see this Wraith Lord. It's going to be in a lot of support to survive especially with melter bombs as well. It's a good map for it I think. And run it into mid support with both teams with both players even 350 415 2 to 1 for red now it's a 1 to 1 going to be a 2 to 1 for blue and a dreadnought on the way for Kumasar David what are we going to see on this thing he's going to keep it melee shuriken cannon shoulder mounted on the wraith lord puts out a crazy amount of dps and can fire on a move 
and unlike ranged weapons for Chaos and Space Marine Dreadnoughts, does not take away from its melee ability. 348-412 hits you with that huge Wraith Sword it has, does splash damage, heavy melee splash damage, and just generally hurts a lot. There's a missile launcher from a Tactical Marine Squad. It is kicking aces, 348-402. Eldar pulling back to mid. We might see a huge engagement here. Rangers still infiltrated. Assault Marines jump in a shuriken. Howling Banshees choosing not to chase them. Ouch, Scouts taking a lot of damage. Howling Banshees now in amongst the Assault Marines. More of them jumping in. Huge engagement here. Here comes the Wraith Lord. Distort field up on those Howling Banshees of the global ability of the Warlock. Wraith Lord throwing an Assault Marine into the ground, but here is a Power Fist Force Commander and he has used Flesh Over Steel on this Wraith Lord. Hard stunning it, but now the stun's worn off and it's backing away. Here comes the Dreadnought for David in its default melee state with those two close combat Dreadnought weapons. Turns to engage the Warlock, I think. Warlock of course cannot get a melee heavy weapon so can't really deal with vehicles by himself. Wraithlord is still around though, chasing off tactical marines, warp throw up for Kaldu as we've seen and Codex also with warp throw and the champion's robe. Power fist of Commissar David and they both have the power fists. 85 DPS heavy melee with that awesome Flesh over steel ability if you can hit it. I don't think you can hit moving vehicles with it or it's very difficult to. But look at the map for blue. Huge map control advantage. Red team need to get together and push mid and make a dent. They jumped in their assault marines last engagement but didn't really support with the dreadnought alongside or force commanders alongside. Ouch, these tactical marines getting thrown about and shots are cracked by rangers. And this awesome shoulder mounted Shuriken Cannon. And here's a Bright Lance from Cal Dukes upgrading his Guardian weapon team. A lot of damage done to that Dreadnought in just a few seconds. Does not snare though, like Laz Cannons, which is why it does so much DPS. 348, 244, triple cap for the Eldar team. And they're going tier 3 here. Rangers getting shots in from both players. They've been used very well. Barely seen them under threat. Somebody's jumping in was kind of pointless, but here comes Kicking Ace. There's Melter Bombs on the Wraith Lord. There's Flesh Over Steel. Force Commander hits level 2. Still going after the Wraith Lord. And Dreadnought is in amongst stuff. Forces off the Bright Lance. Still has to worry about those Howling Banshees though, they have that spear and they're going after it. Looks like he has used his Emperor's Fist as well, or Fist of the Emperor, whatever it's called. But does force them off. Dreadnoughts of course have the often overlooked advantage of buffing nearby troops whenever they make a melee kill. Which Wraith Lords cannot do. Or top goes down. And that was an awesome engagement for the Marines. Wraith Lord is going to go down, I think, to this Force Commander of 13 hit points. One more hit will do it. Bang. Fire Prism could not get a shot off and disrupt him like that. And that was a terrible, terrible engagement for the Eldar. Can they even recover from this? 3, 4, 8, 1, 4, 6. They do have the VP lead. Tactical Marines cap mid. No sign of Stone Guard veterans, which would do a lot of damage with their Hellfire rounds, especially if they try to focus down the Warlocks. Fire Prism on the field for both Eldar players. Another Ranger squad for Codex. They lost both of their Rangers. Kaldut lost his Dire Avengers as well. Tier 3 now for David. Dreadnoughts for both players. This one being repaired by Scouts. More lag from this Observer. Rangers hit the field for Codex. There's the 2 to 1 for Eldar still. Red team did not cap mid. They own the Eldar and all backed off. So Eldar still have the 2 to 1 hit. 
And they are tier 3, so it's not over. Kaldoop has Providence. I think the most expensive war gear in the game. 200, 100 for this thing. You can almost solo infantry armies with it though. Fire Prism. Using its spread shot on the Dreadnought there. Big Fist of the Emperor. Banshee's going down. All of this stuff now inspired to do more damage. Down goes the Fire Prism. Kaldu not recognizing the threat of a Force Commander with Teleporter Pack. Tactical Marines leveling to two. Another very good engagement for the Marines, but it's a triple cap for Eldar. Providence Warlock on a rampage right now. Someone called him a Space Elf. And there is Warp Throw into Ethereal Slash absolutely beasting on these Marines. And again, if you don't know what it does, it renders him invulnerable, gives him huge energy regen, and makes his skills recharge almost instantly, which is why he's absolutely kicking ass here. And another Ethereal Slash, but will he go down as he tries to retreat? Very, very nearly did. Level 3 Warlock now. Dreadnought, I don't think we'll catch. And they managed to get him out of there. This is Codex's Warlock has gone down. Still level 1. Level 4 is Commissar David and Kickin' Ace, level 3. Kitted out the same way. Teleporter Pack and Power Fist. Hiding Banshees get jumped. Assault Marines with their Sergeant able to use the Merciless Strike there, which helps them greatly versus other melee squads. 311, 55, triple cap now for the Marines. Surely they have this in the bag. Kaldu has lost his entire army. Guardian Weapon Team, but he does have an Avatar on the way. But we have Assault Terminators on the field for David, a unique unit to the Force Commander. Storm Shields and Thunder Hammers with heavy melee damage. Very, very tough. Good for taking down vehicles, but we'll do a job versus everything pretty much. And they have preserved their dreadnoughts, which is vital for the Space Marines. This guy getting Dark Age of Technology. Gives it a 300 health buff, I think it is. Dreadnought needs to be careful now. There's a Fire Prism there and Howling Banshees. There is Emperor's Fist. Which has been used to great effect in this game to control the Howling Banshees. Keeping both of the Dreadnoughts melee, which I was not expecting. I was expecting one at least to get the Assault Cannon. But they've done very well melee. Backing off now. Judging the engagement well. Kicking preserves his Dreadnought. But his Force Commander not so lucky. 206.55. Rangers forgetting their cap there for a second. Here is Kaldut's Warlock again. I think it's 200 damage it takes to charge the Providence to allow you to use it. Can't just use it whenever you want, for obvious reasons. Here's an orbital bombardment, I think by kicking. And this is a very, very dangerous nuke now in Elite. You have huge distance that you can place the beams. But as kicking has said, he completely wasted that. 16755 is an avatar with a Wailing Doom easily dodged. Down goes Kaldut's Warlock, ran into Assault Terminators, which is not what you want to do. Howling Banshee is forcing off Marines. Eldar still in this, can they cap mid? Assault Marines jump in. I'm not sure why. To throw a Metal Bomb, just to be, just to be annoying. Assault Terminators now coming in, that is why. Try and finish off this Fire Prism. There is Wrath of Cain now going after the Dreadnought. Can he take this thing out? There's a Bright Lance to support. Should be able to. There's no repair there. Level 3 Dreadnought with Dark Age of Technology. This is going to be a huge blow to lose this thing. And there it is. Should have switched to a ranged weapon, I think, as soon as they saw the Avatar. Easy for me to say, though. Warlock going after Tactical Marines. And this avatar really allowing Eldar to put some pressure on the Marines. They still haven't capped mid though. 12855. And they've lost a natural. 
Bortok trying to take it back. Sub commander for Eldar, very quick on her feet. Has a passive AoE buff as well. Assault Terminators. Terminators, of course, also inspire nearby troops to do more damage whenever they kill anything. But they can kill it in any way and you still get that buff, unlike Dreadnoughts, which have to kill in melee for that buff to activate. 155 is a single cap, very close. Eldar decapping the Space Marines natural and now it's Force Commander versus Warlock. This is Kaldut, level 4. Up against Power Fist Force Commander. Cannot damage him of course with Providence activated. And he's forced off the Force Commander, he's going to try and cap with Providence up. And Eldar have made us a double, 98-50. Kick in. Perhaps he should have spent his red on getting Terminators on the field. He should get a tank right now. Already has one. 98, 28. This dreadnought needs a ranged weapon. He's coming into combat with 373 hit points, level 2. Assault Terminator is trying to cap. There is Wrath of Cain. Ouch, and a grenade on the Terminator takes out a model, and there is Wrath of Cain will even knock back Terminators and his Terminators are done for or are they? Teleport out get away with 7 hit points, Warlock is chasing absolutely crazy engagement at the end here 98-10, Eldar I think have this, was not expecting him to take this game after all those losses at the start of tier 3 there is the 1 to 1 though, maybe they haven't taken this, Tactical Marines cap in mid, stop speaking too soon Indrid Avatar using Wailing Doom though. Hits one model and they retreat. Shouldn't have retreated them, I don't think. They need bodies here. 95 is a single cap for the Space Marines. And that was an absolute chaotic engagement. Kick in, lost his Dreadnought, lost his Predator. Not sure what the heck it was doing all the way over here. Neither team using artillery, plasma cannons, or D cannons, which is nice to see. Usually you see them pretty much massed up on this map, pointing towards the central VP. Another fire prison for Kaldut, and a D cannon on the way for Codex as soon as I say that. It's a double cap for red. Eldar taking a natural back, also have D cap the Space Marines natural, and our cap in mid. Wow. Orbital Bombardment takes out the Warlock. Commissar David asking why it wasn't cap stopping the cap. That's because you need to push a unit away from the point to stop the cap. They can still cap if they're on the floor or floating in midair if they're close enough. But there is the double cap winning the game for the Eldar. What an awesome match. Absolutely crazy engagements all around. The Dreadnoughts did so well for the Space Marines. Should have got ranged weapons at the end there. But it was pretty much the Avatar of Kaldut which held it together for the Eldar allowed them to push with the awesome AOE buff that he gives you thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time